Hello everybody, this is Viper01. Um, I did a video yesterday on brake chambers, uh, air brake chambers specifically, and uh, I realized I may have confused a few people uh, because I didn't decide to show the rest of the brake setup. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that right now, and this is going to involve uh, the things we talked about in the air brake chamber video, which was the slack adjusters, the camshafts, and the drum brakes. Um, so I'm going to take you through that. This image here is uh, the underside of a vehicle as it would be um, set up uh, for use. And you can see here the brake chamber and the airlines, the two airlines coming into it as I mentioned in the other video. Brake chamber and the push rod. Okay. So if you haven't viewed the other video, I suggest you go view it um, so you know exactly what, what these things do and, uh, and how they work. Now, this here is the um, slack adjuster, as mentioned. There's uh, the, the push rod is bolted to the slack adjuster. You can see here the position that it's bolted in. It's three nuts in or three holes in I should say. You notice on the other side it's at the top. And the reason for this is because different brake chambers will have different strokes. Um, you should have the same brake chambers on both sides but occasionally what will happen is they'll put uh, one brake chamber on one side and maybe a different brake chamber on the other side or maybe the uh, maybe the um, slack adjuster isn't identical on either side so they'll have to adjust these for each side. Now the camshaft runs through the slack adjuster and goes to the drum brake. Okay? And by twist by wrenching it, which is what the uh, push rod does, it wrenches the camshaft, the brake will apply. And I'll show you these uh, components as they appear separate. This is the uh, slack adjuster and this happens to be a manual slack adjuster you can tell by the nut over here and by the enclosed uh, space it has a gear in it okay and this gear fits over the end of the uh, camshaft which has the mirrored um, basically the mirrored uh, gear shape so it fits snug and it does not allow it to uh, rotate independently Okay. Now there's a screw in here. You can see the bolt here again. There's a screw in here, and when you turn that screw, basically what it does is it rotates this gear. And that's how you make your adjustment. Now, don't go adjusting these unless you've been properly trained in uh, slack adjusters. You do need a certification to do this uh, legally. You'll also note the three adjustment holes at the top. Okay, this is a brand new slack adjuster. As you see, after a while, they don't look like that anymore. They start to uh, get covered in. But the bolt's still there. You see the bolt here. Three holes. And it's around the camshaft. This is a camshaft. They call them an S-cam. As you can see here, it's an S-shape on the end. This is this end piece here. It's an S-shape. The reason for that is, uh, when it twists, it actually gets wider. So you can see if there was something up here and something down here, when you rotate this, this this end would go up, this end would come down, you could see how it would widen out. So it would force uh, whatever it's between, it would force it apart. And that's basically how the drum brake works. You can also see down on the end here, where the slack adjuster goes, you can see that geared shape. Okay, just make note of those and make note of the length of the camshaft. It goes all the way from the slack adjuster right into the drum brake where the uh, where the S-cam does its business. So I'll show you that now. Here we go. Here's a cutaway that uh, I guess is out of school or something like that. I just found this picture online. Now, you can see the S-cam right here. Okay. The shaft goes out the back to the uh, slack adjuster. Slack adjuster once again is attached to the push rod of the uh, air brake chamber. So when you apply the air brakes, it pushes out the push rod. 
which rotates this slack or which rotates the S cam I should say and this end moves down this end moves up and you can see it it'll push apart these okay now what that does is when it pushes these apart they push in the pads against the drum and that's basically how a drum brake operates it operates by the principle of friction uh, just like your your uh, your disc brakes in your car how they clamp the disc and that causes friction and it stops the disc it's the same thing here except it's a drum that's spinning this outer edge here spins and when you open the uh, the distance here it pushes the pad which uh, runs the entire top and bottom of the of the drum brake it pushes the pad into the drum and that stops this drum from spinning and of course your tire is on this drum okay now these springs here what they do is help pull it back into shape so when you when you release the brake the natural curve here plus the pressure from this spring will automatically force this back into its current uh, position but because of the hook here the hook shape on the S the hook shape here on the S it doesn't let it go beyond that so it, it won't let this uh, this S cam pop out of place basically okay so that's basically how we turn air pressure into a mechanical force that um, stops the vehicle or uh, applies the air brakes. You also note the springs here. Uh, these springs are on some vehicles. Um, they're not on others. It just depends on uh, whether or not your air brakes need a little assistance um, in in holding uh, the slack adjusters in the off position. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. It depends on your, your brake chamber, depends on your uh, drum brakes, your uh, slack adjuster. Um, a mechanic will determine that for you. Um, but at any rate, uh, hopefully that has uh, lifted the level of confusion from uh, some of you. And for others, uh, hopefully it's gotten you uh, a little more appreciation for exactly how uh, uh, transports and dump trucks and all that come to a halt. And uh, you can understand now why um, it takes them so long to stop, because there's actually uh, something called brake lag, which is the application of air. When you step on the brake pedal, it takes time for that air to travel into this chamber. Uh, as we as we witnessed in the other video, it takes time to blow that uh, diaphragm up like a balloon, and then it also takes time for the push rod to move out and apply this uh, mechanical pressure to actually apply the brakes. So there is uh, a slight difference between your normal vehicle brakes application and an air brake application. When you step on the brake, they don't come on at the exact same time. There's a little bit of a delay in air brakes, and that's why you should not uh, decide to pull in front of a vehicle such as this and uh, slam on your brakes. This is Viper01. Uh, I'm going to sign off now, and everybody out there, have a great day.